All right, so I haven't filmed uh, or photographed any of the babies uh, that I've hatched out this year. Um, I did that one video, what was that, a few months back, but uh, I was taking some photos of them and uh, it kind of made sense to also record a video at the same time, two birds, one stone, all that jazz. So um, yeah, we're gonna go through photographing some of the stuff I produced this year and kind of highlight some of my favorite animals uh, in the process. So really to highlight the uh, ever-increasing production value of these videos, um, the audio on this got jacked up, so I'm recording it later. This is a uh, lilac Borneo. This is a combination of a double visual between the recessive sunset and the recessive mocha. So one in 16 odds from double het. And it made a T-negative albino, which is absolutely absurd. Uh, it's pretty lavender color. Um, I think this background, actually, the gray is really e easy to edit out of photos later, but it makes the purple look really, um, you know, accurate as to true life color of this animal. So I'll kind of insert a thing here on how I think the genetics work. So here's my attempt at trying to explain uh, melanin production and how I kind of made a T-negative albino from crossing two different types of T-positive albinos. Uh, for starters, it kind of helps if you view albinism not really as uh, something that you can put in categor categories, but more a sliding scale that ranges between um, probably a hyper-melanistic animal all the way to an uh, uh, albino, T-negative albino. Typically, the designation is brought on by the eye color, with uh, T-negatives typically thought of as having a, um, the red pupils. Um, so, for some reason, people uh, tend to pick on tyrosinase as the most critical molecule in producing melanin, and you know, there's truth to that. Um, but the thing is, melanin production is not a simple, straightforward thing. Uh, if you Google melanin production pathway, and it is a melanin production pathway, we can see that there are numerous inputs, numerous outputs that all relate to each other, that all cross back together. Some of them are critically important, some of them not. It's all super complicated, doesn't really bar getting super deep into, and honestly, we don't really have that great of an understanding, even if we could do that. So, again, people seem to think that tyrosinase is just taking a handful of inputs and producing melanin, and the reality is it's way more complicated than that, and to make it uh, all the more complicated, all of this is occurring in a black box inside of the cell that we really can't see. Um, and maybe, you know, you could spend years and years and years breaking down the true mechanisms of a given type of hypo or albino or T-positive or T-negative or whatever. Um, but that's far outside of the scope of what us as hobbyists are ever really going to be able to do. So I'm going to kind of talk through this pathway and show how we end up with a T-negative albino. So for starters, we have uh, a wild type animal. And, um, you know, that is where everything is occurring as should be. All the things that are relating to all the other things are all talking to each other and playing nicely. Uh, and the output is an appropriate amount of melanin. First up, kind of on the checkbox of categories, we have hypo. And this is some reduced efficiency somewhere in the line that's reducing uh, the amount of melanin ultimately being produced at the end. We have absolutely no clue about where this slight uh, you know, lack of efficiency comes in. We have no idea how great that uh, lack of efficiency is, and that could have a massive output on, you know, how hypo looking the end animal is. Um, sliding that scale further, we have a T positive albino. Now we know tyrosinase is doing something, some melanin is coming out of the end of this process, but uh, not anywhere near as much as should be. So maybe some critical step in some critical component is reducing the efficiency by a pretty drastic amount. Uh, resulting in a T-positive albino. And, you know, it might be something even more complicated than that. It might be something uh, at the start of a process that reduces the efficiency, that, feedbacks, that feeds back into itself, that reduces the efficiency even further and inhibits something and blah, 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 blah. It's all occurring in a black box. We have no clue. All we see is how much uh, melanin is coming out of the end of the pipe. So then finally we reach T-negative albino. And T-negative albino, uh, gets its name from tyrosinase uh, negative. So we assume that tyrosinase uh, is dysfunctional. Um, but that's not necessarily the case. All we know is that no oil is coming out of the tyrosinase factory. Uh, you know, no melanin is being produced, really. Um, but we have no idea what is the root cause of that. It could be something, again, some critical step somewhere along the line that uh, has downstream effects that result in not the proper uh, stuff being delivered to tarosinase to be able to make melanin at all. 
And so now let's get into uh, more explicit examples uh, as it relates to my Borneos. So we have uh, sunset, that's a T positive albino. And so, you know, maybe hypothetically it, 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 you know, this is the mechanism of how that is functioning. Then we have mocha, which is a separate incompatible line of T positive albino. And again, we have no idea where in this pathway it's actually having its effects, but you know, some critical component is reducing the efficiency pretty drastically of tyrosinase. So I crossed the two different lines together, not realizing they were two incompatible lines and produced a bunch of double heads, read those back together this year and finally produced the one in 16 double visual, uh, the lilac, which was a T negative albino. And so again, we can uh, just totally hypothesize about, you know, in combination, these two uh, T positive albino mutations uh, knock out critical steps in the melanin production pathway such that even though tyrosinase might still totally be fine and functional in the animal, it is not given the opportunity or the inputs needed to do its job functionally, uh, and the result is a T negative albino. Or who knows, maybe both of these mutations both affect the efficiency of tyrosinase, and then together they uh, reduce the efficiency such that it's entirely a useless molecule. We really have no idea because all of this is going on behind a, a black box and people spend their entire careers trying to figure out the specifics of um, that black box and that might just be super variable, uh, especially when you think of all the different types of melanins that can be produced. So all that being said, uh, we really don't know why uh, the specifics at least, but the end result is two T positive albinos that resulted in a T negative, a really lavender looking T negative albino. So these are both uh, mocha, <laughs> mocha animals, uh, or at least I think they are. They are from uh, sunset to mocha, or doublehead sunset mocha clutches. So they could technically be uh, sunset, but just based on kind of the color palette of sunsets that I've hatched out compared to the diversity I've seen in mochas, um, I'm pretty comfortable calling these mochas. That's not, uh, you know, there seems to be a fair bit of overlap in terms of like mochas can look like sunsets, but um, it seems like sunsets seem to have a little bit more narrow of a range which they uh, tend to look at. That being said, we really haven't seen a whole lot of combos with these, so, you know, who knows how that'll actually pan out. So here again are just uh, two mocha animals. Actually, I'm going to move them a little bit more into the light over here. Just to kind of give a diversity of, of again, just the variance of color they seem to express. Now, uh, this is a mocha that's possible het granite, and this is a mocha that is possible het ultra platinum. Uh, really a, kind of an outstanding animal. So this is interesting. This is uh, two animals, um, a known mocha animal and a known sunset animal. And they're both kind of a reverse stripe looking. And so, yeah, you can kind of see there's some difference in coloration, but uh, nothing right off the bat that would God, fuck. but there's nothing right off the bat that would uh, immediately distinguish the these two from each other. I mean, the the mochas, like I said, seem to have a ton of variation. Um, they can definitely get a little bit lighter. It again, it seems most of the sunsets look kind of within this color palette, um, but it's still early. It's still really early. I have a lot of animals that uh, I'm kind of sitting on the fence on. So. That being said, I definitely think it's worth uh, gambling on it because, man, that, that double visual of the lilac animal is just absolutely insane. Just so cool. So this thing was an obvious winner as a favorite this year. This was probably the snake I was uh, anticipating the most uh, excited about hatching out. This is the Mocha Ultra Platinum or Ultra Bright. There's uh, kind of both possibilities in there, although I think this one favors more of the ultra bright look. There's some platinum stuff that came out of it that looks more platinum-y, so, you know, I'm not gonna stick my head into whatever kind of worms that Borneo Genetics is. It's a mocha platinum. Uh, it is just insane. The amount of purples, the amount of fading, um, you know, it, it was, uh, you know, the snake speaks for itself and then some. It's just so cool. But, you know, this is the one I was anticipating would look good. This was the one I was really excited about hatching out. The lilac animal, I was not anticipating hatching out at all. So, you know, that one really takes this cake as uh, kind of the favorite of this year, even though looking into the season, this is what I was expecting my favorite to be. So yeah, here's two more snakes in terms of just uh, absolutely insane looking. These are two mocha uh, granite Borneo short tail pythons uh, and just, yeah, absolutely insane. Lucky to hit on a couple of these this year. 
Um, this guy has kind of the more banded look, uh, super cool animal. Um, and this girl just, yeah, super grandy sides, just doesn't get any better than that. That's just so cool. So cool. So the other thing that kind of uh, popped out that was kind of interesting this year is this uh, genetic reverse striping uh, in this Porneo. Um, this is actually a Het Sunset, but I've actually found kind of two different lines popping out of uh, Mocha and Sunset stuff that kind of get this look pretty easily. And crossing between the two, that, that Sunset really seems to like throwing reverse stripe animals. Uh, and that seems to be pretty, pretty dominant. Um, so yeah, it's pretty cool. And so yeah, this is a sunset that is possible hat for Mocha, making it possible double hat uh, lilac. <laughs>